Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update. All right, here's what I'm seeing this morning. Latest data, latest trends. It's all about the Arctic front that is now inbound. This frontal boundary that's going to lay across initially the Tetons, then the Wasatch, parts of Colorado, Oregon. And that's going to be the focal point for some heavy snow, um, strong aura graphics, high snow ratios. And part two of that, it's a one-two punch, is an actual storm system that will come out of Oregon and swipe California and then move through the interior riding that front. So we're going to see two different waves of snow through parts of the interior Rockies. It's also going to generate very strong winds, 40 to 70 miles per hour across uh, the Wasatch, the Tetons, and the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Uh, not only today, 112, but on 113. And that's going to push the, uh, the wind chills to dangerously low categories. I'll give you an example. I'll show you what it's doing right now here in a second. In Utah, so your best window for snow is afternoon, evening, 112 to 115, early in the morning of 115. Then it comes to an end. So that's the key window. And that other storm system that was off of my uh, my forecast yesterday afternoon is now back on for 117 and 118. So that will brush the Wasatch on 117 with additional accumulation. And Colorado, afternoon, evening, 112 through 115, most of 115, in fact, it will snow. And then again, 117 and 118 with that second storm system. Oregon, heavy snow now and wind all the way through 113. That's part of that Arctic front diving south. California snow 113, late 116 into 117, and 120 into 121. That later, that, that third storm, 120 to 121, is part of a, a different pattern that's going to be hitting the entire West Coast. I'll show you that jet setup coming up. In the Northeast, uh, so late 112 into 113, and now uh, that storm on 119, 120 is back on my forecast. I took it off yesterday afternoon just because of low confidence. Now it's back on. So we'll talk about all these different things. Let me show you what it's doing right now. And this is a perfect example of that, uh, that, that high wind generation, those 70 mile an hour wind in my forecast, and also just low wind chills. So this is peak eight at about 13,000 feet, 10 mile range, part of Breckenridge. At the very top, there's a weather station. I've been up there and we're seeing gusts, you can see it, 60 to 70 miles an hour right now with air temps of 15 degrees below zero. That's the air temp, not the wind chill. This is what to expect today and tomorrow in Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming as well. All right, let me take you over to uh, water vapor satellite imagery this morning and show you what all this actually looks like. So here's the setup across the west. Oranges and reds on this represent drier air aloft. Your moisture transport is in your whites and your blues, your greens. So here's this powerhouse storm system, essentially going to become a bomb cyclone that will nail Chicago and then move up into the northeast, um, 112-113. That was a western storm. Here's the Arctic front. Diving south, you can see it right here. So this becomes a focal point for heavy snow, drops the air temps significantly across the west, and really pushes up the snow ratios and the snow generation. Now, on the west side of this, an area of low pressure is going to develop right here. And as it sinks to the south, it will come out of Oregon, sink through California, and then it's going to move into the interior and produce a second wave of heavy snow for Utah, Colorado, maybe brushing the Tetons and also parts of New Mexico before it uh, exits. And then behind that, there's another low, the one that comes in quickly on its coattails, 117, 118. So that's back on the map. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. That's the view by this afternoon. You can see the frontal boundary uh, with that cold blast, jet blast, and heavy snow. As I move it into the future, here's 113, Saturday in the morning. Heavy snow continues along that frontal boundary, central and northern mountains of Colorado, Wasatch. Now, you can see the area of low pressure coming out of Oregon and now getting ready to swipe the, uh, the Sierra with heavy snow. Here it is on 113. Notice that little bit of a lag, a lull in the action um, uh, late Saturday into Sunday morning across Utah, Colorado. That's because we're waiting on the low. And here it comes. So there's Sunday in the morning. Heavy snow returns. Sunday afternoon, still snowing. Now, this is interesting. The snow continues into 115 in the morning along that Arctic boundary in Utah, in the Tetons, in Colorado. And it actually continues into the afternoon in Colorado. You can see that on 115 late in the day. And even into early 116, some very light leftover snow, then that's the end of it. Now, watch what happens. Here comes that other storm system coming in from the Pacific Northwest, 117, 118. It produces another band of snow on a west-northwest flow, Idaho, Montana, Tetons, Wyoming, and in Colorado. So we're going to get additional accumulation. Let me take you one day further. 
into the future. Here's 118, and it's still there on 118, ending in the Tetons, ending in the Wasatch, but continuing in the central and northern mountains of Colorado. I really like that pattern. That could produce some really nice additional snowfall. Here's the jet pattern on uh, 112. So tomorrow, two different jets producing uh, just a powerful uh, feed and orographic type snowfall. Uh, northern and southern branch co-located. You can see that happening right there. Here's 116. So on 116, that storm's gone, but the next one's already revving up. You can see the spin, a little bit of a trough coming into the Pacific Northwest. That's the one that will run through the interior. Here is 117, and there it is. You can see the trough through Idaho, Montana, Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado producing, producing that additional batch of heavy snow. Now, this is a different pattern. By 121, it's all about the West Coast. Look at that powerhouse jet streak moving off the Pacific. That's going to bring heavy moisture into the West Coast, another storm system. So that'll be a pattern type of shift by 121, 120, 121. Here's the new grand total map. So all of today through 121, and keep in mind this accounts for the Arctic front and the storm system, and then that other storm on 117, 118. So we've got over four feet yet to go in Little Cottonwood Canyon, probably 45 to 50 inches in Big Cottonwood Canyon, and roughly two to three feet for Park City Snow Basin and Deer Valley. Uh, roughly one to two feet yet to go for the Tetons, Idaho one to two feet, and in Colorado one to three feet yet to go. Powerful flow into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. I'll zoom in on this in just a second. You can see the numbers. Quite a bit of snow yet to go in Mount Bachelor. A good feed of moisture in general across the west coast from 120 to 121. The Sierra, of course, you've got those few different chances of snow, so a couple of feet on the way. Let me break this down just a little bit. Let me zoom in. Central and northern mountains of Colorado, I-70 corridor, again, one to three feet of snow in the forecast between today and 121. And again, a lot of that starts this afternoon, tonight, continues through the weekend. Um, look at Buff Pass and Steamboat, a couple or three feet to, to go. Look at the numbers right on top of the Continental Divide. I'd love to see three feet at Loveland and Keystone, a basin, Winter Park, a couple of feet up there. Um, one more zoom here. Let me take you over a little further west, western slope, West Elk Mountains here, Crested Butte, about three feet. I'd love to see that too. Snow Mass, about 20 on the way. Capitol Peak, about uh, two to three feet. You can see Mount Harvard and Leadville at about a foot, foot and a half. Um, Monarch would be in a similar category. Okay, here we go. Um, here's um, phase one. So 112 through 115, again, Arctic Front storm system combined. You can see the big numbers potentially. Uh, four feet through Alta and Snowbird, uh, one to two feet through Colorado, and big snow through Mount Bachelor. Okay, here's phase two. So this is 116 through 118. This takes into account that 117, 118 fast moving west northwest flow. We could see eight, nine inches, 10 inches of snow in the Tetons and the Wasatch out of this thing, and in most of Idaho and Montana, which would be outstanding. And Colorado, probably four to 10 inches especially central to northern mountains out of that fast west-northwest flow. So that would be huge bonus snow. Okay, and the final time period is 119 through 121. Again, most of this is 120 through 121 with that, uh, that big jet coming into the west coast. You can see the potentials there for big snow in some areas. That's way out there, but uh, the potentials there. All right, heading to the northeast. So storm system, um, late 112 and a 113 will deliver 70 mile an hour winds and heavy snow at the onset and then changing to a rain snow mix. 116, 117 is still not in my forecast. Confidence too low, not seeing enough. 120, 121 or 119, 120, 121, somewhere in there. Um, that, storm, that storm is back on, the, uh, on my forecast, at least for moderate snow accumulation. So I had to push the numbers up from my update yesterday afternoon, but that's what I'm expecting now. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this, uh, this morning mountain weather update. We've got a lot happening. I know we've got a number. I'll end on the, the grand total map. It goes without saying, obviously, there are a lot of avalanche warnings in effect, so be very careful this weekend. Enjoy all this snow. Um, you know, terrain selection will be of the utmost important, uh, most importance, um, but uh, always appreciate you guys tuning in here, and take care.